Ashley Schell's family directly blames that website for linking their daughter up with this man who they say then lured. Before we get into this, I just want niggas to know back in 2010, I was an Omega demon. Before you could use like face cam and shit, back when you used to M or F, age, question mark, kick, question mark. Yeah, I was one of them demons. You showing dick? Never. For her to run away from home, I was consistently being forced to do things that a child should not have to do. For many of us, one of the toughest things to do in real life is to meet new people. For fucking lames. Have you ever wanted to talk to That shit is tough for fucking losers. You know, if you have social anxiety, I understand. But I feel like since 2020 and the pandemic, it's only gotten worse. Someone so bad, but you just couldn't muster up the courage to say hi. I know I have, but websites like Omegle make it so easy. Omegle is a video chat platform that randomly pairs two strangers together to talk face to face. Instead of traveling hundreds of miles, someone halfway across the world is waiting on the other side of your screen. With over 60 million monthly users in 2021, this app is popular. But the problem is, Omegle isn't like most websites Chat is crazy. Need these niggas is absolutely disgustingly horny to go through any verification to use the site i kid you not i tried going on omegle i literally clicked two buttons and right away i was talking with a stranger and convenience like this comes at a cost your safety warning use omegle at your own risk how would you feel if someone you've never met before told you where you live are you from paris oh my god can you stop please do not use that's terrifying. YouTubers like Justin Schmidt rake in millions of views by doing just that on Omegle. Every time you go on Omegle, your location is exposed. This is because the site uses peer-to-peer -peer connection, which means that the person you're talking to has access to your IP address, which is a string of numbers that shows the address of your device. Someone who has your IP can easily track your movements in real life. All they need to do is copy your IP address and paste it on any geolocation website. And just like that, they know the area you live in. There's even a Google Chrome extension specifically made to find people's locations on Omegle. And there are over 200,000 people using it. Of course, Omegle isn't the only site to track IP addresses. Many other websites track them as well, but the difference is most websites don't publicly expose their users' IPs. And with 30,000 active users at any given time, you're at risk of someone finding out the area you live in. And if you become a target, they could even find out your exact location. But exposing your location is only the tip of the iceberg. The messages you send to other people on Omegle are not private. These messages are stored within Omegle's database. And the worst part, anyone can access them. In August of 2016, Indrajit Buwan, a security consultant who helped uncover the flaws in WhatsApp and Samsung, wanted to show the world how Omegle handles your privacy. He found that Omegle saves screenshots of your messages in their database, which can be retrieved by anyone. All Buwan had to do was write a simple programming script and anyone who uses it could download these screenshots. Many Omegle users type their phone number. M F. <laughs> Throwback days. Shit used to get wicked, boy. Many Omegle users type their phone Shit numbers in the chat wicked, box boy. to connect with a person outside of the website. But as you'll see, this is a big mistake. It's mind-blowing to see how lax Omegle is with their security, but it only gets worse. The site promises two strangers to talk together, but what if there's a third person listening to your conversation without you even knowing? My friend I Am Lucid intercepted real Omegle calls. Is that okay? <laughs> What's wrong? It's scary. And you don't even need to be a hacker to join these conversations. Anyone with a streaming software like OBS can hijack your calls. And it's fine when YouTubers do this for entertainment, but there's nothing stopping someone shady from listening into your Omegle conversation. And when you consider the what? fact that thousands of children use Omegle every day, it's a disaster waiting to happen. It's clear that Omegle has a lack of security. The sheer amount of inappropriate content you can find is proof of that. But that's not the only danger are lurking on Omegle. As you'll see in our next chapter, there's an entire community dedicated to bullying others. The Hateful Cat Boy. On April 29th, 2019, The Hateful Cat Boy. 
YouTuber It's Keisha uploaded a video of her experience using Omegle, and it wasn't a good one. Thousands of people just like It's Keisha get thrown insults on the platform every day. They go on Omegle as a form of escape only to find the opposite. Horrible people are everywhere. On I mean, if you get on Omegle thinking niggas gonna be nice to you, I don't know what to tell you, bro. It's a fucking troll account. I'm not saying they should, but like, bro, what? You thought you was gonna meet kind people on Omegle? I got on Omegle once and instantly white women was going, ooh, ah, ah, ooh, ah, and I was like, Man. The internet. But on Omegle, many of these people record their interactions for everyone to see. In it's Keisha's video, something about one of her encounters really stood out to me. We have option Jew, option Aryan, and option where is the knife coming down, boys? The man in the corner of the screen is TB, known online as Catboy Cammy. Catboy Cammy started off by making prank videos. His popularity skyrocketed when clips of his disgusting behavior on Omegle went viral. He's infamous for wearing blackface while chatting with strangers on Omegle. The Catboy isn't afraid of sharing his vulgar humor with the kids he meets online, and his audience loves it. As you can see from It's Keisha's video, Catboy Cammy was streaming his side of the encounter. Hundreds of people in his chat were actively participating in his game that he played with her. It's just insane to me to see how many people support this guy. Catboy Cammy created a community of like-minded people. These types of creators are banned on YouTube, so they move to other video sharing platforms like BitChute. If you type in Omegle on BitChute search bar, you'll find a ton of these videos. The Catboy may have gotten away with his actions this time, but on Omegle, the things you do can have very real consequences. And in this next chapter, this this person made a big mistake and Edgy it was recorded case. for everyone to see. Michael's terrible mistake. Before he goes on there being his meat. Before we talk about Michael's mistake, I'm sorry, no free ads. Fully aware that they'll see something inappropriate. And after months of being on the site, they get used to seeing these disgusting things, sometimes to the point that they start to do them too. Michael was just 18 when the 2020 event swept the world. With isolation at an all time high, he craved social interaction. Like many others, he would turn to Omegle to satisfy this need. And thanks to these difficult times, Omegle would become more popular than ever. It would be the meeting place for thousands of people just like Michael. Michael started off just chatting with strangers, but soon started to do more than that. What was once his need for human interaction turned into a desire for something more intimate. Michael came across nigga got on Omegle and was being his meat. Many people on Omegle doing nigga got on Omegle and started being his meat inappropriate things and he started to do things too michael would actively look for others who would do it with him it was the closest thing he could get to intimacy with another person but his isolation lessened and life returned to michael just a horny nigga who got caught up bro i don't listen man i don't feel bad for niggas like that because no matter how bad it got i never got on the internet and put my dick out nigga was in there <sighs> your turn like what? Normal. Michael quit Omegle, but he didn't realize that his time on Omegle was a big mistake. After a year since his last visit, Michael visited Omegle again. But out of all the people he could be matched with, he matched with himself. What does this mean exactly? Basically, Michael matched with nigga matched with a nigga showing him being his meat someone who was playing a video on screen a video of michael himself doing inappropriate things for over a year someone had been using a recording of michael to trick others into doing inappropriate acts too while the video of michael plays the imposter posing as him would encourage the stranger to join in on the fun <laughs> nigga was using you being your meat to get bitches to pop pussy Wicked work. Video recordings like these are known, Wicked work. known as VCWs. <laughs> what a VCW- <laughs> Niggas saying real and shit, boy. Wicked work. You basically is, is a program that has recorded footage of someone on webcam. This program has buttons to manipulate how the person in the video acts. If a stranger on Omegle asks the VCW to wave their hand, there's a wave button. If they want you to give a thumbs up, you press the thumbs up. By having these actions on standby, it's a lot easier for the VCW user to trick unsuspecting people to do inappropriate acts. And someone created a VCW of Michael. So why would anyone do this. By using VCW, scammers can secretly record videos of Omegle users and possibly use it as content on websites made for adults. Even experienced Omegle users can fall for tricks like these. But that isn't the worst part about Omegle because we still have to talk about the site's most vulnerable audience, children. 
I shouldn't have trusted you. In order to use yeah, Omegle, you have to tick a checkbox that says you're 18 or older. So you tick the checkbox. Congratulations, you're now an adult. And if anything bad happens to you on the site, they make it clear that it's not Omegle's fault. But in reality, these restrictions do absolutely nothing to stop children from joining. Okay, see, that's the thing, bro. What, like, I get it, but what do you want niggas to do? Niggas is gonna lie about their age anyways. Are you 18 plus on porn sites? Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, Thousands bro, of kids bro, go on Omegle. Like, and I'm not saying kids should be on the app, but like maybe supervise your children a little more. Maybe don't let your kids on the internet with free reign before the age of 14 or 15. Every day, one of them being a young girl who will call AM. In 2014, AM first discovered Omegle during a sleepover with her friends. After a few of these Omegle sessions with her friends, AM eventually felt comfortable enough to go on the site alone. On her first Omegle session alone, she met a man who was much older than her. After chatting with him for 15 minutes, AM was convinced that she made a friend. His friend promised to help AM become a better person. They traded contact information and started texting each other. First, AM's friend asked her to send him a picture of her smiling. And after they grew more comfortable with each other, it turned into him asking for other types of photos. Within two weeks, AM has completely fallen into the spell of this criminal named Ryan. Ryan convinced AM that he was doing this for her healing, that sending him these pictures is part of his promise to help her become a better person. Ryan Nigga, what? Explained that he wasn't forcing her to send him photos, but if she stopped, he would send her photos to her family. Ryan oh, that's fucking crazy. And got away with doing these things to young people for four years until he was eventually caught. The police alerted AM's parents after photos of their daughter were found in Ryan's possession. Even though Ryan was sentenced to 10 years, the problem goes deeper than just him. In 2019, AM filed a $22 million lawsuit against Omegle. Why is she suing Omegle? On Omegle's website, there's a notice that says, Preds have been known to use Omegle, so please be careful. They acknowledge that there are bad people on their website, but nothing seems to be getting done. Talking with strangers can be fun, but all it takes is one person to turn your life upside I'm not saying that they should be sympathetic. I'm just trying to figure out what the lawsuit is going to be. You didn't protect me? I didn't tell you give that nigga your information. The age probably, but Omegle says you have to be 18 or plus to use it. So she willingly lied to get on the app. I'm a little confused. Like, it's not funny what happened to her. It's like her logic. Like, you capped to get on the Omega let it happen. If you lied to get on the app, what like, and I'm not saying, I'm not blaming nobody, not victim shaming, whatever. I'm just trying to figure out the logic behind the lawsuit. You're seeing it in a legal way. They had a legal blocker telling her she had to be 18 plus or uh, to, to use the app. Side down. And sometimes it can even be someone you trust. The creep who got away. Popular YouTubers bring in thousands of people to Omegle every- Their only solution is shutting down the site, and I doubt they're doing that, so. Dead. How, you might ask? Well, these YouTubers record their interactions with strangers on- Speed. On Omegle and post them on their YouTube- You know how a lot of the issues could change? Being a better fucking parent. Paying more attention to your children's lives. Involving yourselves in the things they do. And you would've- Listen, I'm just saying, if her parents had checked in on her, they could've caught that channels so their audience flocks to omegle trying to match with them if they're lucky they might be that one stranger who appears on a youtube video with millions of views my biggest fan Reed, what's up messy what are you doing is reflect who they are in real life <coughs> matching with their favorite youtube is the case. One of these Omegle YouTubers is Dragon Nova, a content creator who had over 600,000 followers on YouTube and TikTok. His content consists of him hijacking Omegle calls, usually leading to some laughs. Watch out, there's a big black man. He's gonna jump scare you. These videos exploded his channel, gaining him a ton of traction. But in January 2022, Dragonova vanished. He deleted his social media accounts after someone exposed his true colors. Dazed Woozy, another YouTuber who makes Omegle content, revealed Dragonova's inappropriate behavior in a Discord video call. When he exposed his private parts on a Discord call. We see it all the time. A YouTuber gets exposed, suffers backlash, and disappears from the spotlight. 
Except this time, it was different. Dragonova made a comeback. But what's surprising was that his fans were not upset. They forgave him and even welcomed him back with open arms. Omega YouTuber is weird, no surprise. Um, They said expose his private parts. I need more context to the situation. Because if the nigga's a pedophile and they're forgiving that nigga, get that nigga gone. But if the nigga was just a horny nigga and you caught him sending dick pics to bitches and whatnot, with consent, yeah. Without consent, get that nigga gone. You feel me? Arms. Since then, he's been comfortably uploading on YouTube and it seems like none of his audience actually cares. I forgive you, dog. Because of the support, the man behind Dragonova started a new channel. Making the same content as before, this new channel would hit 100,000 subscribers again in November 2022. Other YouTubers have tried to raise awareness about his past, but Dragonova and his fans are acting like nothing ever happened. Awareness about his past. I, I want to know what the nigga did, bro. He even deleted his apology video where he opened openly admitted to committing the act but i do believe what was the act bro believe that some people are capable of change and i hope that dragon nova truly has and he got lucky beating his shit he was probably sending unsolicited dick pics or something because to my knowledge he wasn't punished by the law but as you'll see nah carl malone is a sick motherfucker that nigga got a 13 year old pregnant that nigga deserves to be in prison see in our next chapter criminals don't always get away coach casey this is Casey. Growing up, he loved baseball. As he got older, Casey's love for sports led him to becoming a coach. He worked as a volunteer coach for Minnesota's East Ridge High School's baseball team. Casey also became a part-time volleyball coach for another high school in the area. Before joining, he completed Minneapolis's child safety training program called Virtues, Protecting God's Children. Casey was a great coach, and the people who worked with him respected him a lot. But Casey had dark secrets. Unknown to anyone else, Casey made friends with two girls on Omegle, Jaden and Grace. Jaden and Grace were on the site together when they met Casey. The girls hit it off with Casey and shared their contact information with him, and they started texting. Eventually, Casey invited them over to his house. On September 29, 2014, he picked the girls up from volleyball practice. But that night, they never came home. Casey drove them to his house. He convinced the girls to enter through his basement door. At that moment, Jaden and Grace were suspicious, but felt that it was too late for them to back out. Listening to Casey, they fell into his trap. Casey locked them in his basement. The parents' girls were frantic over their missing daughters, but luckily Casey forgot one important thing their cell phones. Authorities were able to track the girls' locations through their cell phones. This led them right to Casey's house. Thankfully, the authorities <coughs> arrived before it was too late. Faced with overwhelming evidence, Casey was sentenced to 11 years. So what motivated Casey to do what he did? Through his own twisted logic, Casey convinced himself that the girls were from broken homes and he was doing them a favor. Casey seemed like an average person like you and me. It's just crazy to think, right, that someone that seems so completely normal on the surface could be capable of such things. But on Them skeletons in niggas' closets is crazy, boy. On Omegle, we haven't even scratched the surface of crazy yet. The crazy cat lady. Before you start searching for strangers on Omegle, you can set your interest. Let's say you type in college cats. The site tries to pair you up with other people who are interested in cats. At least that's how it's supposed to work. Always type in college. On April of 2020, Omegle users reported being matched with someone who physically harmed cats and showed them lifeless on screen. They call this person the crazy cat lady. The crazy cat lady would set her interest on Omegle to furry, targeting them with her shocking content. But she didn't just stop at Omegle. She knew that she was going viral, so she started her own TikTok account. On TikTok, she even posted her exact schedule to let people know when she would be online. With so many people scarred by the videos of this one woman, the internet wasn't going to let it go. Redditors and Discord users went on an online witch hunt. They gathered all the information they could find about the crazy cat lady and submitted the evidence to the authorities and no one expected who was behind this in july of 2022 the crazy cat lady was identified as crystal a veterinary student someone who was supposed to help animals but probably got into the veterinary field to do the opposite when the police raided her home they found numerous animal parts believed to belong to cats and dogs she was found guilty in 2021 and sentenced to 30 only 30 months i want you to know they gave Mike Vick more time.
I'm not saying either of them are like you feel me forgivable for what they did, but they gave Vic like three years. Three months. I can't imagine how anyone can be happy doing what she did. I have a dog and I would never do anything to hurt him. But in her next story, this unfortunate person saw something on their screen that was even worse than what the crazy cat lady did because it wasn't to an animal. It was done to a human. It's just a prank, bro. Prank videos. Love or hate them, they're here to stay on YouTube. And sometimes it's really obvious when they're fake. But on Omegle, it's a lot harder to tell what's real or what's fake. The biggest difference between a YouTube prankster and an Omegle prankster is who gets to turn off the video. On YouTube, you can watch a video all the way through to see the entire prank. But on Omegle, a prankster doesn't always get the chance to tell finding out it's fake. Omegle YouTubers like Something About Chickens come up with pretty creative pranks. As you can see, class. There's actually a lot we can learn from this person. What? <laughs> That's creepy. Other pranksters push the envelope just a little bit. Look behind you. What do you mean? Oh. Oh, what the f <laughs> they really got that man. <laughs> Little nigga right. They said, damn, they snatched that nigga up. <laughs> just like a real nigga would. Nick gonna end that shit and be like, ain't got shit to do with me. It's past my bedtime. I'm not even supposed to be on this shit. But what if you saw something <laughs> horrifying on Omegle and it actually wasn't a prank? On October 22nd, 2013, two friends were on Omegle. Colin, a U.S. Army reservist, and his friend, Cherish. Allegedly, the two wanted to prank a stranger. So when the two matched with a stranger, Colin pulled out his firearm. Thinking that it was unloaded, he fired at his friend, Cherish. That was a huge mistake because he ended Cherish's life. A detective said that someone saw the gun discharge. There was an active chat going on. In the end, Colin pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 8 to 20 years. But till this day, no one knows who saw the incident that happened. No one except that unlucky stranger. And I can't imagine seeing that. We know from these stories that there are- That's one thing I don't play about. Don't point a fucking gun at me. Unloaded, loaded, whatever. Don't point a fucking gun at me. I don't care, bro. That's not no joke, bro. That's not no joke. Don't ever point no fucking gun at me. I don't give a fuck what you think it is. I don't th give a fuck how you think shit's funny. It don't don't point no fucking gun at me. For twisted people on Omegle, but the chances of you running into one of them has to be pretty low, right? Well, we tested this ourselves and the results are not what we hoped for. The disappointing experiment. So my team ran an experiment. I went on Omegle, but didn't type any interests. Telling Omegle your interests helps specify the kind of people you want to meet. So by leaving it blank, the site can pair you with anyone. I left my computer on Omegle for one hour and recorded my screen. Within the first five minutes, I was already paired with a man doing things. Right after that was a screen advertising a website made for adults. In the span of one hour, I came across 11 saddening situations. And all of this was without typing in any interests. Omegle paired What's me up, with Shaker? these users by default. Before you go on Omegle, you have to acknowledge that you are above 18. But the problem is, anyone can check that box. According to the site's terms of service, you assume all risks, even if those risks arise from the negligence or carelessness of Omegle. Omegle wants to keep its hands clean, but this only ends up making the site dirty. Even though the site tells you that your video is being monitored, it doesn't stop anyone. Every time you go on Omegle, you put yourself at risk because the internet is a dangerous place not just because of What's those up, who do evil but because of those who look on and do nothing if you see people online hurting others report it helping one person might not change the world but it could change the world for one person visual venture wait before you go click this playlist right here to watch more. good video